Alrighty guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing part 2 of a dex build or an agility build uh, showing you guys in the video we're going to be showcasing a couple of points I've written down here. Books, magazines, points of interest, food, water, health, stamina management and quests. So we have accepted a quest right now which is going to be a uh, quest in order to gather a resource, gather a material and leave a POI. It's going to be a bag. Alright, so let's leave our point of interest. One of the things you're going to notice in the bottom left hand side of the screen is there are two bars. You have a bar that is blue and you have a bar that is red. The bar that is blue is going to be my stamina management. When that bar gets very low, you cannot run when it hits zero. Uh, and the red bar is obviously my health. Now, at the bottom of the screen as well, you're going to see two more bars. One is blue and one is going to be green. Green is my food, blue is my water. When these bars hit 50%, you're going to receive penalties and the penalties get more intense the lower you get. So keep these kind of things in mind when you are... Uh, keep these kind of things in mind when you are kind of uh, messing around with enemies There are ways to micromanage the stamina and I will explain that to you when we get a moment to sit down and look through the skill tree Three hits to the head knock her down playing it nice and safe Loot bag now they do have a chance of dropping loot, but it is very low. Unfortunately, I don't have any Wood in my inventory, which is fine Dropped quite a few bullets uh, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that I'm gonna grab the one underneath and I'm gonna find a tree and I'm gonna very quickly cut down the tree Take my free food. There you go. This is a magazine. What do magazines do? Whenever you read a magazine, look in the bottom right hand side of the screen, the number will increase. You see how it's two out of a hundred? Sorry, my camera's blocking it. Uh, let me just move the camera along a tiny bit. All right, it's now two out of a hundred that you should be able to see. What this currently means is that's going to be two out of a hundred in terms of cooking. Every five levels or so, I will gain a bonus. I see a chicken. I'm gonna take a quick shot. I don't have many feathers in my inventory. I see two chickens. Unfortunately, I missed. Now, with the bow, you do have quite a lot of drop-off, uh, and you do have to respectfully play around the fact that you can get modifications in order to increase your drop-off. You can use a crossbow. You can use a higher tier. That wooden stump that I broke there had a 5% chance to drop a jar of honey. Jars of honey... Ooh, unlucky. Jars of honey are what is used to cure infection. There are a few ways to cure infection if a zombie bites you. So when zombies bite you, they can lacerate multiple different things. They can cause bleeding. They can cause concussions. They can cause uh, infection. They can uh, cause um, staggers and stuns on you so you can't move, you can't jump. So you have to be very, very careful. Now I'm having a quick look at my inventory. I don't have a lot of stones. I don't have a lot of arrows. I would like to find a rock that I can break. There's one right there. I see a crawler. The beautiful thing about a crawler is they're very slow. They always hit you in the lower body. Just going to take him out nice and easy. There we go. And he's always worth the exact same experience as a normal zombie. Very easy to kill. You don't have to worry about him. The only reason I'm breaking these now is because I want to get more arrows. If I was doing a strength build, arrows would be more of an aggro tool as opposed to more of an offensive tool. Notice that sound that my character makes when I'm out of stamina. I have to respectfully respect that because if anything creeps up on me, we could be in a lot of trouble. So, with magazines, when you read them, the number goes up. Not all skills in the game share maximum 100. Some will be 80, some will be 75, some might even be as low as 50. So, what this means is every five levels in cooking or so, I'll be able to do something new. At level five in cooking, I'll be able to make teas, and at level 10, I'll be able to make bacon and eggs. So, finding these books are very important. If you were to be looking for a cooking book, you can generally find them in cupboards, inside fridges, all kinds of places. You can find them anywhere, but these are the highest places that they can spawn. Now, there are different things that you can do to amplify your spawn rate or what you're going to be finding. For example, if I spec into MasterChef, it'll increase my chances of finding a cooking book, respectfully. All right, we've got a decent amount of stones. I'm going to make a couple more arrows. I can make 24, and that's me out of wood. I will be cutting down a tree. We can notice that it's 1 p.m. at the top of the screen. So at 2200, it becomes nightfall, and nightfall zombies generally move faster. It's a lot harder to see as well. Because I'm playing on maximized settings, they move at the exact same speed at night and day. Uh, normally, you wouldn't be dealing with zombies moving as quickly as I currently am versing them. But like I said, I have the settings maxed out. Now, there are books you can find as well. Now, if I have a quick showcase of what books are, they're over here. You see this thing here? Craft, uh, crafting skills will tell you what you can unlock. So if we go all the way over to cooking, food. At level 4, I can make cornbread. At level 11, I can make pumpkin pie. So it's actually showcasing all the way here, all the different things I can make at different levels. So this is important to keep in mind. But what we're after is we're after bacon and eggs. This one right there that we can see. 
bacon and eggs. That is what we're going to be able, what we're after. We need food level 10. That's going to be a really good form of uh, health or healing, a really good form of stamina buff, and a really good just uh, resource to, it's very easy to make. All you need to do is search nests. You might get lucky, find an egg. So it's something to definitely keep in mind. All right, let's keep moving. Yet again, there's another possibility that there's a 5% chance of a jar of honey here. Now, when you get a little bit more advanced at this game, you're able to use cotton, which is the plant you can see to my left-hand side, alongside duct tape. Duct tape can be made on a campfire. I'll go through a cook uh, a guide explaining all this later on down the track. Uh, but you can use that in order to make padded armor for damage mitigation at 4.5% per slot. So something I want to explain real quick is this question mark. This question mark is the beginning of a quest. Now, there is an advanced strategy that can be done, is with the second you click on this, it's going to reset the POI. The point of interest will reset. If I destroy this entire house and then I click this button, the whole house will come back. So what you can do is you can go through the house, execute all the zombies, and then you can uh, loot the whole place, come back out, and then start the quest and everything respawns rather than waiting the seven days. So, something to keep in mind. I'm on a bit of a clock right now, so I'm going to start the timer right now. Alright, so the quest has begun, and let's uh, let's get in here. Now, this is a tier 1 quest, so it should be quite easy. Alright, sounds like we have a zombie that's going to be running. I do not want to deal with him right now. He is a burn zombie. Burn zombies can light you on fire. Looks like he's a little bit confused. I'll take a free headshot if I can. Nice, easy damage. I'm not too worried about the other guy, because the other guy's a little bit slower, yeah? They're hitting the block under me, so that will break, and I will fall. Not too worried. Move in and move out. Take a free hit in his head and keep moving down. That's alright. He should be about maybe two more hits. I don't have a lot of points and headshots just yet before he dies. Maybe one with an arrow if I'm lucky. Got him in the body and he died. Let's move back. Let's take a free headshot on the zombie. Nice and easy. Take a stab. Move in and out. Take a stab. Down he goes. And easy as that. If you were using dex uh, dexterity, you can see that you have to be a little, little bit more nimble with your movement. Uh, as opposed to using something like strength, you can just use blunt force trauma. Okay, I'm going to grab this. It's a level 2 axe as opposed to level 1. I see the crawler coming on the left. This is a steroid injection. A steroid injection is very, very important because that's going to allow me to have maxed out inventory. When you hit uh, all these lines up here, do you see the weight capacity here? And you're overweight, you move slower. You get stamina back slower. Everything is slow. With a steroid injection, you move 10% quicker and you get no penalties. A good thing about the injection is if you have a sprained foot, you can run when you use a steroid injection rather than having a penalty towards running. So it's something you definitely want to hold on to and use in a case of an emergency. Now, I'm a big fan of breaking these bodies. A lot of people walk past them. They give you a very, very small amount of nitrate, but nitrate is very important for you later on in the game. And why not start collecting it early? That way you don't have to mine it. Okay. This is our entry point into the uh, house. I don't know what's inside that wardrobe, so let's take a shot. Looks like it's just a wardrobe. Do you see that? Looks like there's a guy lying down on the ground. I'm going to fall down. Hopefully I didn't make too much noise. I see there is a bag right here. Now, I have a choice to make right now. I can clear out all these zombies. Yes, you can shoot through doors like that. You can also attack through doors. It's a nice little feature the devs did add. I'm going to take a couple of stabs. I see there's a bag in that room with him. Should be three to the head to knock him down. Remember, the dagger has very small range because it is a dagger, as opposed to using something like a spear. you got to get nice and close on this. All right. Let's quickly pick this up, grab that, break the body, and come all the way over here. Now, do you see this curtain? First aid bandage. I'm going to break that, and that's going to give me cloth fragments. Cloth fragments are going to allow me to make first aid bandages. So right under the floor is this uh, here. Now, rather than doing this entire point of interest, I can leave right now. It is completely up to me, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So we found a couple of items of clothing. That's good. I'm going to read this. It's going to get me a little bit closer to being able to make first aid bandages, because right now I can't. Put on a couple of items of clothing, and just like that, rather than actually doing the rest of this quest, I'm going to leave. I could clear the entire base, fight all the rest of the zombies, but handing in quests is very important. I'll explain to you why. Every 10 quests you do at a tier, there are tier 1 to 5 quests. Every 10 quests you do at a tier, your quest vendor will level up. Now, when they level up, they will offer you quests for harder quests. So if you clear 10 gas stations or 10 very easy quests, he'll be like, okay, you're tough enough to do something harder. Now, don't get me wrong, I could walk into a harder quest zone and do it anyways, but I wouldn't get the free reward. At the end of any quest that you do, you get bulk experience, a decent amount of money, and you get a quest reward. 
So when you finish the 10 quests, you then get to choose what item you want, and he will give you a good reward between 1 and 5 choices. If you spec heavily into intelligence, you can actually take 2 of his uh, items as a reward. So that's something to keep in mind. But we'll cover intelligence in another tutorial. So these are my choices. I'm actually going to grab the duct tape. Duct tape is incredibly crucial, because with duct tape, I'm going to be able to make armor. Clear zombies and buried supplies. Buried supplies, in my opinion, takes way too long early game. You have to dig and find a treasure chest. It gives good loot, but it takes a lot of time. And I don't want to waste all that time on chance. $300 and 10 duct tape. Right now, I have enough cloth fragments to do nothing. But if I keep getting more cloth fragments, I'll be keeping my eye out for things that are made out of cloth. I'm going to be able to make armor. Armor is going to mitigate a proportion of the damage I take. And that is going to be crucial. Uh, at night time, the zombies will be spawning in quite a lot, so keep that in mind. You will not be able to hide in the trader at 2200. He kicks you out 10 minutes before 2200, and then you have to uh, fend for yourself for this evening. Now, this game, you can build and craft a house, design traps, you can give yourself electricity. There is a lot you can do. As you can see, the only thing I'm currently using right now is crates in order to jump and get over fences. For example, if a horde of zombies was coming at me right now and I needed to get away, I can just crate, crate, and just like that, I'm over the fence. Nice and easy. Do you see the one red skull? The one red skull means I'm in a one-tier uh, one zone. Depending on the bio that your character is in, for example, if I'm in the snow, there'll be extra difficulties adding. You see these bodies here? I can break these for, yet again, more nitrate. Nitrate does nothing early game, but it's important late game. The second I start this quest or this point of interest, you'll notice these bodies will respawn. Just like that, the bodies are back. This has reset the entire point of interest. So what you could have done is you could have ran through the whole POI, aggroed all the zombies, and then reset the point of interest. So, we hear movement on my left. Behind, it is a nurse. I'm going to just come over here. I'm going to put that there, that there, that there, and that there. Now she can't get out. And now when she walks up, we'll take a free hit to the face. Two of them, I'm definitely not tough enough to take on two guys running when it's going to take five headshots to kill them. I hear movement behind, and it's always important to pay attention to your surroundings. You think I'm going to focus on the guy underneath me, or I want to try and eliminate one of them before I have to deal with three of them. I don't have enough stamina stability in order to deal with all of these guys at once. She'll get out really soon. Little arms, unfortunately. Keeping in mind it is a knife. My character has leveled up, and I can respectfully use that skill point into anything. I'm going to keep stacking it into headshot damage, because in my personal opinion, it is the best thing you can level into early game. The multipliers you get are great, because the enemies that I'm currently fighting right now, like this guy here, he has no armor. Because he has no armor, when I get damage amplifications, it's just raw damage to his health, yeah? The trick is to hit him in the head, because if I don't hit him in the head, I don't get the bonuses. Just like that, get rid of all that, and I have no idea where this other one went. I don't know if she bled out. They can bleed out if you do hit them with a knife. I have no idea where she went. So I have to be a little bit more mindful. The quest is clear the area. Okay. Now look at the mini-map at the top of the screen. Do you see three red dots? That tells me that there are three enemies uh, that are currently coming towards me, yeah? Alright. That was a critical hit. Just was able to one-tap him. Absolutely brilliant. Obviously going to focus the big one first. Three hits to the head. Now this is kind of respectfully what you have to do really early on in the game. Especially when you're in a weaker spot like I am now. When I get a couple of levels, I'll be able to take on maybe two, three of them at a time. But I'm not at that point just yet. Okay. Now do you currently see on the mini-map where there's a little orange circle? or yellow, whatever you want to refer to it as, that's telling me that this area is nearly fully cleared, and the rest of the enemies available to kill are in this location. So we're going to just try and sneak in with crouch. Crouching does allow you to move quietly. Do you see that there? Now that I'm crouched, we can see the eye in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. This is how well, I, how easy I am to spot. The heavier the armor, the more noise you make. So I can just come up here, right mouse button to zoom in. Do you see the accuracy gets more clean? If I'm standing and I zoom in, it's still bigger. This, when you crouch, it gets a little bit smaller. Now, when I headshot, you should see a number in the middle of the screen. It should be 3.5 times damage. Now, that is a 3.5 times damage to the head. As you can see, I one-shot her. Nice and easy. So, stealth is a thing in this game. We're going to weave, move in, move out, stab to the face, do the exact same thing again. Because I'm in no armor, I get no penalties towards movement speed. But if she hits me, she's going to hit me for 25 damage. Critical hit to the head. 
Now, this is going to be a tier 1 loot room, so there's not going to be much to loot in here. But you do have a couple of choices, or a couple of things to take. Dirty water, I don't want to drink that. I can't really make teas at the moment, so I'm not going to worry about that. I can pick up plants if I want to. A baton, I don't need that. A couple of higher level arrows. Some armor that I can put in armor. I don't have any armor on at the moment, so I can't do anything with that either. Some ammo on the ground, what do we got? Uh, crossbow bolts and uh, blunderbluss rounds. I can't do anything with that either. So we're going to scrap it for just raw lead. And we're going to break this open as well. See what we got inside here. I get a little bit better when it comes to making sledgehammers. There you go. I got another food book. That's three food books. Quickly search the casket. Nothing. The higher your game stage in this game, the better the loot. What is game stage? Right here on the screen, you should be able to see... Uh, it says my character is level 2 and my game stage is level 2. These numbers will not stay the same. The better you play... The higher this number goes, the higher this number, the stronger the enemies, and the better the yield of loot. It's a very good mechanic. If I start dying multiple times, this number will go down. So game stage is very, very important uh, in terms of finding better loot. Finding assault rifles rather than clubs. Because I am basically in the equivalent of the Stone Age at this point in time. So, we're going to run all the way back to the trader and we're going to hand this quest in. Let's just make sure I've covered all the points in the video. Um, yes, yeah, so stamina management as well. I did level up, and you can see respectfully, my character has one skill point. If I were to be putting points into deep cut, this makes me better with machetes and knives. The thing about a machete is it's a cleave as opposed to a thrust like a dagger. Very powerful. You'll notice down here at Fencer, I know there's a lot of font here, but that's daggers for you. It basically says, killing blows will grant you stamina back. Knives inflict bleeds upon an opponent. Yes, you can bleed out a zombie, you don't have to hit them in the head. But, yet again... I am not going to put any points into this. If I put one point into this, you'll notice it says find more bladed weapons and parts. That means when I loot, I'm more likely to find a bladed weapon, a hunting knife, or parts. Important to keep in mind. However, this number here requires two points now in order to be level this up. I want to level this all the way down. The further down this is, down here, I have a 50% chance to one tap tier one zombies to the head if they don't have any amplifications. A 50% chance. Imagine that with my attack speed. Yes, I can increase my attack speed. When you start versing armored enemies, that number does get lower, so keep that in mind. Keeping that num uh, Getting that number as well, higher, is going to allow me to do more headshot damage. And if I stealth hit enemies with a bow, I will be able to clean up house quite comfortably. So let's move back into the trader. If we look at the top of the screen, it's currently 1800. That is fine. We're still on day one. The game is called Seven Days to Die because every seven days a horde of zombies will come to your location during a blood moon and try and uh, wipe you off the face of the earth. Now, on the maximum settings, I can expect to deal with anywhere between 150 and 200 zombies. It's a lot of zombies. So, we need to make sure we get our uh, head screwed on before then. Straight away, we're looking at all these options that this guy has. He's going to give me 800 bucks, 3,000 experience. He's going to give me a modification. Do you see how there's a little book? He's going to teach me how to make that. He's not going to give me the mod. He's going to give me the knowledge to craft it. I don't really want that. He's going to give me 109 millimeter bullets, a muzzle brake mod, which is basically going to help with recoil on a gun, shotgun ammo, or glue. Glue is used with bones. Uh, sorry, glue is used with uh, cloth fragments in order to make duct tape. I already have quite a bit of duct tape, so I don't need the glue. Uh, murky water and bones makes glue, I believe. Uh, I'm going to take the 9mm bullets because specking into agility actually amplifies your pistol damage as well. So, one of the beautiful things about being an agility-based character is specking into this right now is giving all agility things bonus damage. I'm getting damage towards bows, damage towards knives, damage towards handguns, all these kind of things. If I were to be an expert handgun user, we spec all the way down. Do you see how these are locked? These unlock when you hit the respective uh, agility. So all the way down at the bottom, you can't see because my camera's blocking it. For me to get level 5 gunslinger, I need 10 points of agility. So you will need to max this out. There are items of clothing, which will be... Uh, uh, ski goggles you can wear in order to give you amplifications towards agility by plus one. Because at the bottom, down here, these final two points require three level ups and three level ups to get professional athlete and parkour. If we were specking into one of these other trees, it'd be a little bit different how we spec, but as agility, my personal preference is to max out 
agility as far down as you possibly can. Generally, seven is a good number to stop at. Then you can be like, hey, Jay, I really want to uh, spec into archery. I found a nice gun, so I'm going to go into uh, gunsmithing. I want more attack speed. I want more blade damage. I want to be able to find light armor parts, which is very important. You'll notice when I hit seven, I'm going to put one point here, one point here, and one point here. Rather than going heavy into one, heavy into one will give me more damage. However, putting one point in here will give me a higher chance of finding bullets, 9mm bullets, which is what I'll be using later on. More handguns, more handgun parts, yet again, more knives, more knife parts, yet again, more armor, more armor parts is going to be crucial. So, we're going to cut the video here, guys. Uh, that is part two to a guide of explaining how... Seven Days to Die works as an agility build. In the next video, we'll cover armor crafting, hopefully. So stay tuned, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Cheers.